Uh, hello. Uh, can you all hear me well? Yes. That's good. So, uh, first of all, uh, I want to welcome you to this session about OpenStack Courier. Um, how many of you were in the keynote today? Please show of hands. Okay, almost everybody. How many of you saw it fail? Uh, how many were looking to the other side? Okay, okay. Not, not too bad. Uh, and fi a final question, at least for now. Uh, how many of you were in the session yesterday uh, of Mohammed uh, Bani Kazemi about... Okay, good, good. So we're going to have a, a bit of similar demo at the end, but we're going to give a slightly different perspective, maybe not go so much into the Docker networking. Uh, and yeah, maybe it's time already to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Antonio Segura Puymedon. Uh, I work at Midakura. And uh, I'm Gal Sagi, working for Huawei European Research Center. And he, he's going to give the first part of the presentation and we'll keep changing, asking questions and so on. So if you have any question at any point, f feel free to raise your hand and if it's the right moment, we can, we can change. Uh, so, uh, as I was uh, walking uh, yesterday in some of the session, career was uh, mentioned uh, quite a lot, as uh, most of you noticed. Uh, and I'm happy for this because uh, it makes my life uh, easier right now to explain to you. Uh, and it also shows us that uh, it's uh, something that interests the community. It's something that we are tackling a point that uh, others were trying to tackle and address. Uh, and this is something uh, good that we want to see going forward. Uh, it's important to also notice that career is not trying to solve uh, everything and all the problems. It's merely trying to bridge between two different uh, solutions. So before uh, I will delve into the project itself and what we are doing, uh, let's first uh, see what are the problems that we notice in uh, today's uh, containers networking world. Uh, and these problems are what led us to uh, start this project and work on. So what we saw is that uh, network abstraction are being reinvented and redoing over and over. We can see Docker Lib Network, we could see Kubernetes models, uh, CNI for CoreOS. And all of these uh, new models are still experimental and they are still evolving and changing quite uh, frequently. Uh, we saw just uh, an example of this happening uh, a week ago where Docker changed their Lib Network API completely. So it's hard to integrate and follow all these changes. Uh, another thing that we notice is uh, there are many new container-specific solutions for containers networking, like uh, Flanel, uh, Weave, Socket Plane, uh, which is now part of Docker. Uh, and all of these uh, uh, solutions are pretty container uh, specific and are, when you compare them to the current Neutron solution, are much uh, less feature rich and uh, must, uh, uh, much less uh, mature. We also notice another uh, thing is that the current Neutron solutions uh, out there are trying to integrate with all of these uh, abstraction and new models. Uh, but they are doing it separately, so each project is doing it uh, in its own repository in uh, redoing things over and over again. And it doesn't really make sense when you look at the OpenStack environments. Another common deployment uh, model for containers today is uh, nested inside tenant VMs. Okay, so we have uh, the, VM, the tenant VMs connected in one networking infrastructure. And then you have a completely different solution inside the VM itself for the containers networking. Uh, this uh, introduces what we call uh, the double overlay problem because you now have uh, performance and latency problems uh, because the packet going from one container to another needs to go through all of these uh, layers and solution. Uh, but it also introduces another, uh, and I think uh, even more important uh, problem is from management and debugging. And these are areas that people sometimes overlook, uh, but you now have uh, more than one solution implementing your networking. Sorry. And, uh, and when you have too much solutions, you need debugging and understanding where a problem is uh, takes more time. And when you look at other advanced uh, things, like when you start doing uh, upgrades and updates and uh, 
high availability and uh, clustering and deployment of all of these things, it's complicated. Uh, what we can see here is, uh, as I mentioned, all of these new uh, new solutions uh, for containers networking like Weave, Lanel, uh, Socket Plan, which is part of Docker. And when you come to think about it, containers networking is not that different from VM networking. And adding more and more solutions when we have open source alternatives uh, is not the process that we might want to see. I think this uh, diagram shows uh, one of uh, the double overlay problem that I talked about. Uh, and this is common deployment uh, for project uh, Magnum, for example. We have the containers nested in the VM. We have the tenant VMs uh, connected with a networking infrastructure, usually a neutron plugin of some sort. And then another different uh, solution like uh, Flannel commonly inside of it. This again introduced the problems of uh, double encapsulation. Uh, and, of course, the management and deployment problems that uh, I talked previously. So, how are we trying to solve uh, these problems with career? Uh, well, I think this sentence uh, pretty much sums it up. Uh, we identify that we already have a well-tested, mature and deployed networking abstraction. And it is Neutron, the OpenStack networking abstraction. Uh, and in Courier, what we try to do is leverage that abstraction for containers networking. So what we are doing in a Courier? Uh, what we are doing is we are trying to map between all of these different uh, abstractions. Uh, and Docker Lib Network is just one example. We are also looking at uh, Kubernetes and other models. And we are mapping between all of these new models uh, through Courier to the Neutron API. Uh, by doing this uh, mapping, what we basically introduce is a vendor lockdown free solution for container networking, right? Because uh, now every Neutron plugin that you have can be used for containers networking. And of course, uh, uh, by doing all of this mapping, we are also uh, focusing uh, deployment and focusing development efforts in one location. So instead of uh, re-implementing and redoing this part uh, for each individual solution, and this takes a lot of effort because you want to do uh, testing and you want to test that uh, the API are not changing in any of the models and you want more uh, review power, and doing it separately uh, is not uh, time time-wise smart, especially when we are targeting OpenStack environments. Uh, the double overlay problem that I mentioned, there are already Neutron solutions that are trying to tackling this uh, use case. For example, we have uh, OVN, uh, Midonet, and Dragonflow. And all of these solutions are trying to solve the nested containers use case using one networking infrastructure that is both used in uh, connecting the tenant VMs and inside the VM connecting uh, the containers. Uh, this, uh, of course, reduces all the complexity that I talked about uh, management-wise because we now have one uh, solution uh, that is solving the networking end-to-end. -end. But uh, as we will uh, see uh, as well, this also reduces uh, performance and latency problems because now we don't have to use the double encapsulation. We, can, we have uh, two solutions that can sync together, uh, do most of the computation in the compute node, and then a very lightweight uh, thing in the VM. And of course, another uh, important aspect of connecting containers networking to uh, Neutron is we get with zero effort all of Neutron features. And there are many uh, important features, uh, mature features for networking, like security groups, netting, and of course, the advanced uh, services like load balancing as a service, firewall as a service, and so on. And as Neutron mature, uh, we will keep getting this solution with zero effort. 
So here I want to uh, show you a little bit the deployment uh, examples of Courier and how it looks like uh, in an OpenStack environment. Uh, Tony will uh, soon describe that deployment is a very important case for us. We are thinking about containerizing Neutron plugins and compatible with Cola. Uh, but we wanted just to give you a grasp of how the environment looks like. Uh, we also are working on how to integrate with multi-node environments and orchestration engines like Swarm, Kubernetes, and so on. So in this uh, example, we could see uh, the Docker uh, daemon at the compute node, and it has the career service running next to it. Uh, Docker allows you to, uh, Lib Network allows you to register remote drivers, so they hijack all the Docker CLI and API and transfer it to uh, the driver. So what we do in a career is we take these APIs and translate them and call to the Neutron API. So now you have any Neutron uh, plugin uh, that you deployed in this environment will enable uh, networking for uh, containers. Another uh, deployment uh, use case that we have is what I talked about, the nested uh, VMs. And uh, again, it's very similar to the, to the other solution. Uh, we are hijacking again uh, the API calls from Docker's from, from inside the VM, uh, communicating with the Neutron service. Here we can expose uh, the features that I talked about uh, for plugins that support nested containers. So now we can orchestrate uh, networking both for the tenant VMs themselves and the containers uh, inside those VMs. And we have very, uh, a lot of ideas how to you know, deploy this, use uh, Magnum A templates to deploy a career inside a VM. So it's, it's going to be a very uh, simple process. A little bit uh, overview about uh, our project. So Career is a fully open source project. Uh, it's a team effort. We are part of Neutron uh, Big Stadium. Uh, we are working, of course, for first step, we are working on uh, Docker and Lib Network. But as I mentioned, we are also considering other uh, orchestration uh, engines. Uh, we are working very closely with uh, other containers-oriented projects like Magnum and Cola, and of course Neutron. But we are also trying to represent Neutron and OpenStack in other communities like the Docker uh, community. There is one example, uh, there was a feature for label uh, support in uh, Docker that we try to prioritize and so on. Uh, and we are uh, working on both uh, fronts. Of course, we have a weekly IRC meeting, and I invite you all uh, to join. We are doing everything on the mailing list, Launchpad, and the OpenStack way. So this is a, a review states a graph uh, for Liberty. Keep in mind that we are a new project. Uh, the reason why I showed it uh, here is because I think it shows that we already have a large diversity in the people and companies that are working on this project. And this is something that uh, both me and Tony would like to see uh, going forward. Uh, I think it's important and we would like to welcome all of you to come after, talk with us and join this effort. Uh, and in this uh, time, I would also like uh, to thank everyone that helped and uh, helped this effort until now. So up until now, I described to you uh, the problems that Courier is trying to solve in containers networking, how it aims at solving them, and a quick overview of the project. Uh, from here, Tony will uh, describe to you the features we have implemented for uh, Liberty and our roadmap going ahead. All right, let's see if I manage to make this work. Yeah, cool. I was looking all the time, like, which button is which. Uh, I think I went back, right? Yeah, apparently it's it's reversed, so I had to figure it out. Okay, so uh, as Gal said, uh, we are doing a Lib Network remote driver. It's not the only thing we will be doing. We will uh, also be integrating with all those container orchestration engines, right? Um, but yeah, let's let's talk first about the remote driver. When Docker acquired the socket plane, uh, they tasked them with uh, developing. Uh, a refactoring of the whole 
networking stack and making uh, what is uh, now known as Lib Network. It comes with a multi-node uh, overlay driver, but for, for third parties, for vendors, uh, they proposed to have uh, the remote driver interface. So basically, uh, to, to connect to it, you just have to tell Docker somehow uh, where is uh, your, your server, or your daemon that is listening for, for bindings, for, for, for creating all those abstractions, the, the networks, the endpoints, uh, services, and so on. So as, as you can see here in the picture, Docker sends the, the REST API calls to, to the courier remote driver. Uh, Mohammed uh, yesterday already did uh, a description of s some of those calls, the, the basic ones, the joint network to container and so on. And then we translate that to Neutron. Uh, right now, like we're just creating networks, creating ports and so on, but as, as we said, we want to work together with the community to, to, to add much more to that so that you can uh, maybe make some patterns for load balancing. You can always use those features directly with the Neutron API, but we want to expose some of that as well through the, through the Docker uh, label support. And as you can see here, uh, and, and you, you could see here in the conference, like yesterday it was shown with OVS, this morning, sadly the demo didn't go, but it was with OVN, and today you're gonna see the, the demo with, uh, with Midonet. All right, so how does the beef binding work? Very easy, it's, it's like really simple, but uh, somebody had to do it, right? <laughs> uh, all right, so yeah, you just, you just get the request, uh, then you make the, the VF pair and, and, and you give the information to, to Docker. So what, what we do is we handle the, the common part, which is to give the information to Docker and to, and to retrieve the IPAM information from Neutron, right? And uh, we then pass off control to the, to the script from the different vendors. We usually it's like a one-liner or two-liner uh, script in bash but i mean you, you can write it in whatever you want right but it's it's like a really simple model like uh, rc init scripts style like you just put the file into a place and it detects the beef type and if the beef type it's called midonet or obs it will search for a file an executable called midonet and it will pass something in standard input return standard output and, and that's it um, so as i said uh, the common part and the other part. Of course, for the f for future cases like nested, that may vary a bit for for the for the nested layer. I'm going to talk about it later. Uh, and it's important to tell uh, that we're running currently as root, but we don't plan on continu continuing doing so. Uh, what, what we want to do actually is to leverage the the capability system of the Linux kernel so that we will run with a normal user that just has the minimum capabilities. So probably capnet admin and, and not much more, I hope. And this is something that we also would like a uh, Neutron community to, to start using and, and we'll, we'll start discussing it on Friday probably. Um, so for deployment, right now, really simple. We still don't have the package, so you have to check out the code. Uh, but we're gonna have package there's the typical configuration file in etc, courier, courier.conf. If, if you came here yesterday, you, you saw that, that Mohammed was modifying the token there rapidly in the, in the configuration file. You can also give the configuration um, using environment variables. So if you're, I don't know, for example, me, I don't like to write configuration variables when I'm changing stuff all the time, so I just set the environment variables. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have packages, we're going to maintain them for the major distributions uh, like RDO and Canonical, OpenStack, and so on. So it's it, it just going to be available. Uh, but at the same time, since we like containers so much, we want to integrate with Cola. We have been in discussions a bit already. And uh, yeah, th there's already a plan. So basically, each uh, vendor that wants to integrate with us just has to make their own uh, flavor with their own binding script and the agents, which probably they can reuse that effort for normal Newton support for Cola. And then, if all goes well, you should just be able to, 
to run Courier and Cola in about two minutes with, a, with the deployment of the parts that you need. So probably only Neutron and Keystone, maybe Horizon if, if you're into the graphical sort of things. Um, it's not passing the slide. All right, let's see. Yeah, that never fails. Almost. Uh, so yeah, for the nested use, use, usage, I would like to know, is somebody here running Magnum? OK. More people need to run Magnum. Come on. It's, it's a nice project. Uh, and how many people, in that case, want to run Magnum or run uh, any other way uh, the containers isolated in VMs? All right. There's, there's some hands. So yeah, we don't have that yet, uh, but we are going to build it. It's on the, on the roadmap that I'm going to discuss later. And, and, and this, the idea is the same. We're going to have a specific binding uh, driver that, that does the part that is necessary on the, on the VM. And on the lower side, uh, it probably will not need anything. And the agents of the, of the vendors should be able to tackle it by itself, because we are going to identify on the Neutron database that that port is a special so that uh, agents should be able to do it. Uh, I think uh, OBN does something very similar right now. In fact, we, we got the idea from that. And we just want to standardize it and make it into a, into a more common thing. I think it, I should be pronouncing it oven, but I just you know been pronouncing it like that for a long time. Um, all right, so let's go. I need to change it like this. Yeah, so here you can see. Uh, what will happen uh, is basically that on the, I don't know if it's useful if I uh, point with this. Uh, ah, it's not visible. Anyway, so the Courier, uh, in this case, obviously, will run on the VM. Uh, so Magnum could just deploy it saying, here you will find Neutron. Or if, for security reasons, Neutron cannot be accessible from the VM. There is some proposal uh, for being able to pass information uh, in a very specific way from from the container. Uh, sorry, from the VM down, and we may use that. It's still, as you, as you can see, not completely final. But the basic concept is, on the VM side, the containers will be assigned uh, a VLAN tag. It can be with a bridge or or with OVS. Doesn't matter. It's going to be something very simple. And and then on the on the bottom part, the vendor has to uh, insert a flow uh, that, that separates that, that tag into a kind of device that then can be processed naturally by their own agent. So we're going to see if that will also receive some common code on everybody or anyone wants to do their own thing. But yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just still a question. So, and, and, and the good thing, uh, and, and I think that it's really important, when you compare it to just uh, providing neutral networking to the VM and then making an overlay on top of that, even if you got rid of, of, the, of the double encapsulation, which I believe that they did recently, is that um, by doing this, you get each container endpoint uh, or how, however many NICs you want to run there, a single resources that you can target directly with your neutron commands and, and a much more fine-grained control over, over your infrastructure and your networking needs. I managed to press the button. I'm glad. Um, so, so that's, uh, that's yeah. for him because <laughs> neutron, he's, he's more neutron than me, so I'm going to let him do. <laughs> um, so uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, career mission is to bridge between two communities, right? The containers communities and Docker, Kubernetes, uh, Mesos, and every, everyone there. And bridge between uh, the Neutron uh, community and OpenStack. And what we identify is that there are some missing parts that needs to be addressed. Uh, and we are uh, sometimes actively uh, pursuing to, uh, to address them and implement them in Neutron. And where sometimes uh, they are being already addressed by other use cases and other members of the community. Uh, and we are just making sure that uh, uh, what we need and our use cases are, are being handled as well. So we can see here a few examples of this. Uh, we are uh, working on port forwarding in Neutron, which is a usable uh, feature without the containers as well. Uh, but this is important for us for feature parity with uh, Docker port mapping. 
uh, we are working on uh, allocating, being able to allocate tags to neutron resources. Uh, this is uh, important, again, for other use cases as well, but for ours we want to, to be able to pre-allocate networks and ports for containers so you have the entire networking deployment ready and when you want to start a container on, only you need to do the binding part. Okay, so this is uh, decrease uh, deployment complexity and uh, increase uh, boot up time uh, of the containers. Uh, other items in this list is we want to formalize the way to define nested containers. We are going to leverage VLAN trunking for that. It's already have abstract uh, naming like support and uh, parent ports uh, and we believe this will be compatible with our use cases and uh, other uh, neutron uh, features that we see missing and needs to be done. And uh, by, uh, as I mentioned, uh, when we connect uh, containers networking to neutron, we get with zero effort all of neutron features uh, and Neutron evolves and it's keep progressing and new features are added and these features are important to containers networking. Uh, the end goal of course is to reduce complexity so instead of reinventing things in other abstractions uh, we are using Neutron ones so there is the security groups netting, advanced services of course load balancing and firewall as a service that's next step to implement and there are many use cases for that. Uh, for example, uh, linking Kubernetes uh, service to uh, neutron load balancing. Uh, and we can see uh, that the current, uh, the current abstractions for containers are adding more and more uh, features like Docker are introducing a pluggable IPAM right now, which Neutron already has as part of Liberty. So uh, we are working how to uh, connect these two together. Yeah, all right. So, um, for the roadmap, this obviously is the roadmap that we took to get till where we are now. There is no liberty release, of course, uh, because it, this is uh, quite in heavy development. Uh, we are catching up to, to patches from Lib Network all the time. The interfaces are changing. It seems that we will stabilize with, uh, with 1.9 for a while, which is about to be released. So, so that's going to be good and it's going to give you a chance to try it if you want. I'm going to show you how in the demo. Uh, but yeah, basically we put some specs and we did some talks with the other, uh, with our own Neutron community and with, with Magnum to, to set the basis for, for the path forward. Uh, then we did the, the binding layer, which was the absolute must for, for showing something like the, the, the pinging demo. And we also did the authentication, which will allow you to eventually use different tenants. Uh, you just use the token from the one you belong to, and, and naturally you're going to get the right access to the, to the networks. So what are we going to do for, for Mitaka? Uh, Docker Lib Network added support for uh, a kind of configurable IPM, some, some API endpoints. Probably in the beginning we're gonna just use dummy ones since we already do IPM as it as it stands now, but we want to leverage it as much as possible. Make sure that, that we make the most of it. Then the nested containers. Then the next one, which is the top one actually, is functional testing to use the OpenStack infrastructure to be able to uh, run the proper gating for the for the patches that it tests all the whole thing because now it's a bit manual. We have unit tests, they are very good, but when you start to, to, to get speed, you need to make sure that, that everything is working and we want to, to have it test the different vendors, so we have to figure out if it's going to be third party CI or how it's going to be, but it's already in discussion, so we're, we're going to get there. Um, and finally, the, the features that he was mentioning that, that we're pushing for uh, with with Neutron, those features are important and will allow you uh, to make a, a better usage and, and more similar to the to the one you expect and have come to to love in in Docker, like the the ability to forward ports so you don't spend a floating IP uh, for all your containers, which 
at some point may, may get a bit expensive and not everybody has that amount of uh, floating IPs. Uh, and going forward for the end release, yeah, we're going to go and enable more and more of Neutron. And what we really want to have is also support for the CNI, the Container Networking Interface, I believe. And also we want to really ask you to join us and to uh, contribute. If you have some container orchestration engine that you want to have integration with, please come to the IRC, talk with us. Uh, we're going to probably have some kind of uh, integrations directory in the repository so that you can make the code if a plugin is necessary. So that's the, the right place to make it. And then we can maybe even build some kind of, of testing for it so it's automated and so on. So time for the demo, time to put the, the heavy gear and, <laughs> and get to the serious stuff. So who wants to see it uh, live? And who wants to see it uh, live? How many people? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, it depends on the network, eh? because it's, it's, very, it's, very, it's, very, it's, it's very spotty, the Wi-Fi. Let's see if I can get to my server in the other side of Tokyo. All right. Um, otherwise, I have it recorded, so at least you're going to see something and, and get my comments on it. But all right. Are we in or not? Let's start this. I'm out of the network, but no problem. I have a, a fail-safe solution, so. Let's see. Trying to connect it's now to the uh, network? OK. It's not yeah, showing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move it now. Oh. I was just connecting to the network. All right, so first. Let's do a SSH shuttle, so we have access to um, to Horizon, fine. I'm already logged in because I, otherwise I would forget the password. Um, all right, so let's go to the machine. I'm connected with Moz, so even if we lose connectivity, we should be able to continue in a little while because, as I said, it comes and goes. Here you can see uh, that we created a subnet pool. So the idea is that you can create a subnet pool called Courier uh, and one called uh, Courier 6 for IPv6. Completely up to you if you want to use it or not. Right now, I'm not going to use it. And then you can see that we still don't have any Docker network created for Courier. So let's do that. Uh, Docker, uh, Docker network create, create demo. OK, so the network was created. Uh, yes, that's absolutely true. <laughs> I, for, I, I create it with, uh, with a regular one. So I'll create a, a different one. doesn't matter. Test the uh, Courier. Uh, test. Mm, is it capital D? Okay. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. The Courier. Yeah, yeah, right. All right. Um, OK, so now we go to show it net list. And we can see that uh, a network with a horrible long name, which is the UUID that, that Docker gives, uh, has been created. We will try somehow to, to make it uh, better. This is, this is for mapping reasons, since the UUIDs cannot, are given by the different applications, so you cannot use the same. Uh, which would be nice, but in any case, one is much longer th than the other, and you can just not map one to the other because you would not be able to do the mapping in reverse. So, well, what can we do? All right, so now let's try to run something. Run. Wait, uh, I will create a different one. Docker run publish. OK, so we will create first the pinger. I, cre I called it test the network. So as you can see, uh, you, give, you, you can do in a single command, create the network, the port, and everything, and start the container. Uh, but you have to specify the driver and the name of the network when doing so. Nice, we lost access to the Wi-Fi. Just, just give it a second. It usually comes back. 
I, I was expecting a better networking here. So, uh, all right. So, we create it, and now there's a, a little goblin going and plugging uh, the the beef and so on. And now it's plugging it into the overlay, and hopefully after a second or two, if we didn't lose the Wi-Fi, we're gonna see it inside. It's taking a while. Okay, here we are. So yeah, you see, uh, we are in the network that I created. We have an IP. If you would have added the, the IPv6 query 6 uh, subnet pool, you would get an IPv6 by default as well. Let's do that again. Um, Docker run. So we're going to get a pingy uh, on the test network. And since that's going to take a while, as, ex as experience showed, uh, let's go to look a bit at, is it possible to see it from where you stand or should I make it bigger? Bigger, right? All right. Uh, so let's see if I remember how to use Chrome. Uh, here it goes. Okay, is it, is it okay now? Yep. Cool. So yeah, yesterday, uh, Mohammed didn't show this part because it was, I, I think it was added recently. It just, if you want to be able to graphically see, okay, what, what do I have plugged? We recently added code to, to show uh, where is, the, where is the, the binding or which bindings are there and which belong to, to our uh, courier uh, remote driver. So as you can see here, you get the information courier container. So that means it's ours. So you shouldn't mess, I mean, delete them because otherwise you could create inconsistencies, but you can just do it uh, with the Docker commands. All right, so here we are. We have four. This is the pingy. So let's ping it. Ping. I'm lazy to type, so I'm going to copy it. Okay, and we see that the ping works. Yeah, big success. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah, so this, this one in particular, as I said, it runs uh, on, on top of Middlenet. Right now, uh, there's some changes to the multi-node code, but it should just work in a couple of weeks um, because there, there was some change in, in the way that the uh, KV store, the key value store that has the network information between the different Docker containers propagates information. And well, I prepare, well, Taku, which I have to thank a lot for the demo, uh, made prepare the demo earlier than that. So there is that. And now let's see uh, how we can use a Neutron to affect uh, all this. So since Gal is much better than me than the Neutron. Uh, I, with uh, usage of Neutron, I have to use myself the, the, the UI because I really, I really don't I know think, the commands. Uh, maybe a <laughs> questions right now? Because we have, uh, I think, um, basically well, what... It, it's out of time? Or, well, I yeah. just want to show the security groups thing, so it's... Are we out of time completely, or...? Yeah, in a minute. So maybe the, the idea here I'm is, again, that yeah. we could use uh, Neutron features to block this ping uh, with security groups. Uh, and any other Neutron features like the floating IPs and things that uh, I mentioned earlier. And I think uh, it's important if anyone has a questions right now, maybe. Yeah, you uh, can ask the questions while I do this, so it's, it's cool. How does this uh, work with Neutron port hot plugging for Docker? So non-existing ports on Docker hot plugging through Neutron. Excuse me, well, can you repeat it? To you the can mic see the, the pinging has yeah. stopped because I deleted the... How does this scroll, work so. with Neutron port hot plugging? So if you don't have a pre-existing interface inside your Docker and you do a Neutron, create a new interface? So basically we are, what we are doing is a v Ethernet pair, right? So we have the Neutron port that is created in a, in a neutron, and we the only need the only thing that we need to do is bind the namespace of the containers when it's created to the neutron port, uh, and it depends on the infrastructure. Uh, of course, depends on which backend uh, you use. Uh, for example, it's connecting it to uh, OVS bridge port, 
connecting it to Linux Bridge, connecting it to any other thing. Uh, this is exactly the generic uh, VIF binding layer that uh, Tony mentioned. Yeah, and if you wanted to do something more exotic, like, I don't know, clear containers from Intel or uh, Hyper.sh, that, that, that they do kind of VM container -ish mixture, as long as they implemented the lib network, uh, the only thing that would have to change is that uh, we would have to add some information in the, in the code base that when it's one of those beef types or, or something like that, it would detect it and it would create a tap device instead of, uh, of a VF and then it would be put. So it, it, it would just work with a bit of hand holding. A question on the security group. Uh, is it? So the, on the, for the VM, we have a Linux bridge that uh, put in the security group. Mm -hmm. For containers, you directly plug the VIF, uh, VIF pairs to the, uh, to the container. There's no place to do uh, IP tables. Well, actually, uh, I, th I think, uh, so the question was what would happen uh, in the OVS reference implementation with security groups that uh, currently uses uh, Linux bridges. It uses some BF between Linux bridge and so on. Well, everybody is familiar with it, right? So. Um, what happens is, I think that the, the, the beef driver, the beef driver for OBS, when it detects that um, there is security groups enabled, should create the extra bridge, Linux bridge uh, and do, and do the, the two-step plugging that is necessary for that. It should not be too difficult. It should be a couple of lines, and maybe we can make it uh, configurable in a section for the, so in the configuration file, we can have a, a section for that. And yeah, it, it, it's all a matter of the, of the binding script. There's no reason why it, it would not work. Uh, but I'm not sure if anybody is going to want to do that because from what I heard yesterday, they are going to get the contract uh, support to yeah. do all those things, right? So yeah. maybe just the normal plugging will, w is going to be able to do the security groups in the, in the Mitako release. I'm, I'm not sure. It, it depends. So for the nest, for the nested uh, case, containers within a VM, what do the tags indicate? Does it indicate the tenancy of the containers? No, the network. It does? Yeah. OK, very good. Thanks. OK, so thank you very yeah. much. Thanks a lot for joining.